Well, hey, what's going on? Nick Kirby here. Welcome to a special edition of Chatterbox Reds, presented as always by DSC Commodities. Today, we continue our NL Central previews with the Pittsburgh Pirates. I brought on Cody Duncan. He's a writer for the Pirates for the site Rum Bunter. Uh, Cody had really good insight of the Pirates. Really fascinating team to watch this year. I'll give some more of my thoughts on them in just a moment. Uh, but first, as always, we are presented by Deep South Commodities. DSC is a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production. They specialize in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Thanks so much, as always, to our friends at DSC. All right, this Pittsburgh Pirates team, fascinating team. They got a pretty good lineup. I mean, O'Neill Cruz, I would expect that he's going to have a pretty good year for the Pirates. We know Brian Reynolds is an absolute stud. Uh, Brian Hayes looked really good towards the end of last year. Jack Sawinski's a guy that I really liked. They added some nice pieces like Rowdy Telez and Yusmani Grandol, who are looking for bounce backs, but they didn't invest a whole lot in any of one of those guys. So I think the Pirates have a pretty competitive lineup, a lineup that that is is okay, average at least, to have the potential to be, uh, I think, above average. Pirates bullpen last year was really, really good. Uh, they brought back almost all those pieces, added a few others, of course, with the Rolls Chapman. So the Pirates' bullpen should be a strength again for them this year. The big question with the Pirates is that pitching rotation. They inked Mitch Keller to a deal, um, an extension, uh, just a few weeks ago. But behind Keller, do they really have enough? Of course, Paul Skeens is the guy on the way that everyone's talking about. In fact, if you're watching or listening to this on Thursday, the day of the release, Skeens is actually supposed to make his uh, spring training debut on Thursday afternoon. Um, against the Orioles. Uh, I did this interview with Cody back on Monday, uh, so we didn't have that information at that point during the interview. But um, I think you'll really enjoy this interview with Cody. Um, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button, um, subscribe to Chatterbox Sports, uh, hit the bell in the top right corner. That'll turn on notifications so you're notified anytime we go live. And then, of course, Chatterbox Reds, we will have new podcasts every single morning, seven days a week, all spring, covering the Cincinnati Reds, every game that happens. Uh, make sure you check us out. Um, Chatterbox Reds, everywhere you get podcasts. All right, without further ado, let's uh, preview the Pittsburgh Pirates with Cody Duncan. All right, I'm joined now by Cody Duncan. Uh, pleased to have him on to preview the Pittsburgh Pirates. And Cody, when we talk about the Pittsburgh Pirates on our Red show, they are a very polarizing topic. Uh, you have part of Reds fans and Reds uh, people, uh, and I would consider myself in the camp that, hey, the Pittsburgh Pirates are a pretty dangerous team. This team played pretty good baseball most of the year outside of a few weeks last year, and that was without O'Neill Cruz. And then you have the other half that are like, well, they're the Pirates they'll always find a way. We're, I'm assuming you're probably more in my camp where you're a Pittsburgh Pirates believer this year. Give me the case for why the Pirates could compete in the NL Central. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, one guy that you just mentioned, the reason why is O'Neill Cruz. I mean, if he's fully healthy and it looks like to at least, you know, what the um, what people are saying is he looks to be healthy and he looks ready to go. So he's going to be a big part of this team uh, moving forward this year. Uh, we were very weak at shortstop last year because of his injury. Uh, we had guys all over the place like Alika Williams, um, you know, Leo Verpiguero, Nick Gonzalez. We had so many guys out there trying to fill that spot. And with him being back, it's really going to help this team. So the Pirates kind of had an interesting offseason. I, I, I like a lot of their moves. Not, not moves that necessarily are going to uh, break headlines across the baseball, but uh, guys like Rowdy Telez, Yasmani Grandal, uh, Martin Perez, Marco Gonzalez, uh, Aroldis Chapman, Josh Fleming, you kind of go down the list. These are all nice little pieces. Uh, what do you think kind of about what they did this offseason? I think, you know, they filled some pieces, like you said, that were going to help or definitely going to help the team. Uh, I think they still needed to fix this rotation up a little bit more. I mean, adding Marco Gonzalez, you know, basically for nothing. I, I think they traded uh, – well, the Braves traded for him, and then we traded for him. So we – I think we're paying like $3 million of his salary 
which is typical pirates. But, um, you know, so he comes with, you know, a bargain. But, you know, he definitely helps out with the rotation, especially since he's been at driveline, I believe, all this offseason. And he's increased his velocity. It looks like he's healthy. So he could be a, a good piece to this rotation. And then, like you said, Martin Perez, you know, um, I don't think I think he ended up losing his rotation spot with the Rangers last year. But, you know, if he if we even see a little bit of a resemblance of 2022 Perez, you know, he could be a great asset to this team. And then on, you know, like you said, we we helped out our bullpen by getting Araldis Chapman. Um, so I think the, the bullpen for the Pirates is probably their strongest suit for this year or their strongest, um, you know, basically their strongest suit for hopefully the the entire year as long as they stay healthy so as long as we get through I think the sixth inning I, I think the Pirates will have a chance uh you know this this season yeah I felt as a as a Reds fan last year that uh the, the Pirates bullpen you you wanted to make sure you got a lead early on him because uh that bullpen was was really really sneaky good last year so back to the rotation, uh, Pirates Inc. Mitch, Mitch Keller to a extension, probably kind of similar to the the vein of of Cabrian Hayes from a couple years ago. I, I'm looking through Mitch Keller's game logs last year, and he had like three blow up games, but other than that, he was actually really good. Yeah, especially in the beginning of the year. I think April and May, he was just one of the best pitchers out there. I mean, we thought, you know, he might get some Cy Young votes at that point. Um, then, you know, as he kind of went away and started to struggle a little bit, the team did as well. And you, like you said, he did have a couple blow up, uh, you know, blow up games, but at the, for the most part, he pitched really well throughout the whole season. And you know, I think this extension is deserving. Um, I don't think it's too much for the Pirates, and I don't think it's too little for Mitch Keller. I think it's a, a good middle middle ground for both uh, both him and the team. And uh, I'm glad it's done because, like like we mentioned earlier, um, the rotation is the biggest problem for this this team. And at least having him for the next five years will will at least take care of one of those one of those uh, rotational uh, pieces for the team. So look it up and down the the Pirates lineup, pretty pretty lengthy lineup. Uh, not a ton of like glaring holes if you look at it. Um, you know, obviously with O'Neill Cruz, Brian Brian Reynolds is a is an absolute star. Brian Hayes looked really good at times last year. I think especially towards the end of the year. Um, I really like Jack Sawinski. I feel like he's a guy that that maybe could take that that leap this year. Is, is there anyone that kind of stands out in the Pirates lineup or something that needs to go right for them this year? I think, uh, like the guys you mentioned, um, you know, that's those those guys are all keys or key pieces to this this lineup. I mean, Henry Davis is a big question mark at the catcher position. Um, you know, uh, first spring training game, apparently he he played pretty well uh, behind the uh, behind the dish. So it's you know we'll see how he ends up doing, but he's definitely fighting for us. Uh, a, well, the starting spot, but I know they given Grandal. You know, obviously he's going to be a part of the team. I mean, we paid him, I think, one point five million. So of course he's going to be part of the team. Maybe he got two point five. I might have, I might have mistaken there. But regardless, he's fighting between Jason Delay and Ali Sanchez uh, for that second spot. But that doesn't mean he, you know, if he, he if he beats both of those guys, uh, he still could still get he still could get the starting. Uh, you know, catching job. And that would be huge for this team because we're not really worried about his hit, hit tool. I mean, he can hit the ball. Uh, you know, the, the stats don't show for it last year. He was dealing with an injury and he was also a rookie, but you know, he hit through all, all through the minor leagues. He's, you know, I think he was two for three at spring, spring training the first game. He's his, his exit velos are very, very nice. Uh, it's very encouraging. So that's a guy that's, you know, to keep an eye on, especially if he ends up being the starter at, at the catcher position. That would be huge for the team. But there's another guy I want to mention that not a lot of people know of or even know that he's on the Pirates. And that's uh, an addition that we added or the Pirates added uh, this offseason. They traded for Edward Oliveris from the Kansas City Royals. And this kid, you know, he could be a starter. And I think he will be in right field. Uh 
you know, I think the, the outfield is going to look like Brian Reynolds in left, uh, Jackson Winsky in center, uh, very high on Jackson Winsky as well, as you mentioned. But then I think Edward Olivares takes this, this bright field position as long as he, you know, performs well. I mean, last year, uh, you know, he, he had a pretty good, he had a pretty good year. He had 354 at bats, 12 home runs, batted 263 with a 317 on base percentage, had a 769 OPS. Um, that's a guy that, you know, maybe on a big market team wouldn't be making the starting lineup, but for us, that's, that's, that's a, that's a key piece. And so I'm, I'm hoping he even takes another step forward with the pirates and, I know his defense is very suspect, but his offense can definitely help this team. So uh, that's a guy that I would definitely at least pay attention to. Well, and he'd probably be batting, what, eighth or ninth? So, I mean, that's still a a pretty solid bat for for the bottom of the order. I, I want to go back to, to Henry Davis, who you mentioned. Last year, um, obviously, the Pirates had Indy Rodriguez, who unfortunately you guys lost for the year. Just a, a brutal uh, uh, loss because he looked like an absolute – star in, in the making a catcher in, in my opinion but last year they played Henry Davis out in the outfield are they doing that again this year or is he just going to catch in DH have they said anything about that yeah so I'm not entirely sure I mean I know that's definitely a possibility that he plays in the outfield but at least from the reports that he his main focus is at being a catcher uh, this year, especially like you said, with Indy being out for the year, they need him to step up and be a catcher uh, for this 2024 season. If it doesn't work out, we know that we could at least put him in the DH spot or, you know, give him some more opportunities in right field. But to be honest with you, I, I really don't want to see him in the outfield. I know, I know a lot of play or a lot of fans don't want to see him in the outfield. One, he's a big liability out there. <laughs> uh, he, he, he has a great arm, but man, uh, it looked sometimes last year, it looked really, really bad. Um, but, you know, if he, like I said, his, our, his main focus should be the catcher, catcher role this year. I'm, and I'm hoping that he either catches or he DHs maybe once or twice a week, maybe <laughs> in right field. But other than that, I really hope that's not the case. All right. Uh, I, I want to ask you one uh, hitting one one offensive player, I should say, this year uh, that's under the radar that we need to watch this season. I know you already mentioned uh, all of ours, but is there any other any other offensive players to watch this year? Maybe that won't even debut to start the season. Well, I think he's going to debut, and the guy that I'm mentioning uh, is Leover Pagaro. Uh, he was a rookie last year. Uh, always been. He was a fringe top 100 prospect at one point. He was, a, uh, I think he was in the 90s uh, at one point, maybe a couple years ago. But he is fighting for the second base position. And I think he's fighting between Jared Triolo, which is another guy that's, you know, I could have mentioned, but, and then G1 Bay and Nick Gonzalez. But I think he's the guy that's going to be pr the guy that, well, I think he's going to come out with a starting role. At least that's what it looks like anyway. You know, he had, he had 198 at-bats last year. He had seven home runs, 237 average, but a 280 on base definitely needs to improve. Uh, his walk rate definitely needs to improve. But that's a guy that, in my opinion, he has all the tools to break out this year and really, you know, take a hold of that position. And, and even if he's batting eighth or ninth, you know, if he's batting, you know, if he has, an, you know, OPS of 750 and he's batting eighth or ninth, we'll, we'll take that all day, you know. Um, so that's a guy that at least keep an eye on as well. Um, very, he has a very nice glove, uh, already showing, uh, showing some uh, highlight reels of, of, of yesterday's game. So uh, he had a diving play at second base to get an out. So it's like I'm not worried about his glove. It's more so what can he do um, at the plate? And I think this is a year for him to show um, what he's capable of. Ronzi Contreras, a guy that was really, really good back in uh, 2022. I think he dealt with injuries last year, if I remember right, um, and, and then struggled when he when he when he pitched. What's his role for the team this year? Well, reports coming out is his velocity is back up uh, in 2022. He was averaging 94 to 96 miles an hour on his fastball. I mean, he even reached up to 98, 99 at some points. Um, but last year, uh, 
it just fell off. He was pitching, I think the, you know, on average, he was pitching 91, 92 miles an hour and, and his, his control was not there. He's always had control issues. So when you have control issues and you're throwing, you know, 91 mile an hour heaters, it's not going to be a good recipe. Uh, so, but apparently, uh, like I said, his velocity is up. He's actually going to um, have a start to or today. I mean, obviously this, this video might go out a couple of days later, but he's starting in sprint training today. Um, and we'll see how he ends up doing. But that's, I feel like because uh, he's out of options and there's, like I said, reports that he's, he's feeling better about himself and he's pitching better. Uh, I feel like he's going to be, you know, maybe, maybe that fifth spot in that rotation, at least to start the season. It'll be interesting to watch him. Any other bullpen arms that are maybe under the radar? Yeah, Carmen Majinski, he's a ro he was a rookie last year. Uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people know who he is, but he pitched really well last year. Uh, he had a 2.25 ERA in 35 games, uh, 36 innings pitched, and had 34 strikeouts with a whip of 1.28. That's a guy that I could see being in the seventh, eighth, eighth role at times, but for the most part, I think he's going to be, um, you know, seventh inning guy. Um, followed by, you know, either Chapman or Holderman or Bednar, which uh, that's that's what's great is you have so many of these so many guys that you can throw out there, especially if somebody needs a rest day. Um, and all those guys that I just mentioned, Majinski, Holderman, uh, like I said, Chapman, Bednar, all those guys could probably be closer type pitchers. Um, and we have four of them, you know, and then on top of that, you got Dari Moretta. Uh, we got from you guys just saying thank you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but he's a, he's a, he's another guy that I really happy is in this rotation and um, yes, but Carmen Majinski is a is is a bullpen pitcher that uh, I would keep an eye on. Majinski spelled M L O D Z I N S K I. I'm glad you said it because I'm looking at the the their Fangraphs roster and I I would have never guessed that. Uh, okay, so Paul Skeens obviously he's a hot topic. When are we gonna see Paul Skeens? Um, well, do you want me to say it as a fan or, a, uh, <laughs> as a GM? Because I know the GM, uh, Ben Sherrington, he's probably going to take as long as he possibly can to get him up, especially if he, you know, pitches well to start the season. Um, but say everything goes well and, you know, he just dominates double A, gets called up, uh, to triple A Indianapolis and just continues to dominate there, uh, I think you, we could hopefully, I said, this is best case scenario, in my opinion, hopefully uh, end of May, maybe the beginning of June would be my hope. Uh, but, you know, as a fan, if he starts dominating and he just continues to look like he, what he should, uh, I would love to see him in April, but I just don't, I don't see that happening. Any other prospects that we should keep an eye on? Yeah, Jared Jones. Um, he's he's I believe in almost every top 100 prospect now with uh, Baseball America. I believe he is. I know he's on MLB Pipeline, and I know he's on Fangraphs Top 100. So he's a guy that uh, he actually just pitched the other day. Um, he's 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 throwing around 98, 99 mile an hour fastballs. His 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 um, spin rate is incredible. Uh, he pitched really well in double A last year. I think in double A, let me look real quick. Yeah, he had a 2.23 ERA. Did struggle a little bit in uh, in triple A, but, um, you know, towards the end of the season, he pitched really well. So that's a guy um, that you could, at least if you're a Reds fan and you're trying to pay attention to the, your, you know, your division rivals, that's a guy that I would at least keep an eye on because he you might end up seeing him throughout this season. Well, Cody, this has been fantastic. Thanks so much for uh, uh, this preview of the Pirates and uh, looking forward to the season. It'd be fun if uh, the the Reds and Pirates both could get back up to the top of the NL Central. I remember back in 2013, went to PNC Park towards the end of that season, and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun watching those teams both at the top of the division. So it'd be cool to see that again this year. Yeah, for sure. I um, you know, I haven't mentioned who I thought was going to win the division, but I actually do think it's going to be the Reds, no. which – with your guys' uh, additions with Frank Montas, Nick Martinez, 
you know, the only thing you guys were missing was pitching. And uh, your your offensive lineup, as long as it stays healthy, is incredible. So, yeah, uh, it should be a good season for you guys. All right. Well, thanks again, Cody. We'll catch up again soon. All right. Well, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, hit that like button below and uh, subscribe to Chatterbox Sports on YouTube. We've got all kinds of great content off the bench uh, with Trace Fowler. That is Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we also have Chatterbox Reacts, uh, Reed and Elliot uh, reacting to some of the top news stories. Chatterbox Bearcats, Chuck and Houdini. They go live after every UC basketball game. All kinds of great content. We're continuing to grow. Make sure you subscribe to Chatterbox Sports, uh, and we will see you again next time. Have a great day, everyone.